um, Elon Musk hosted Saturday Night Live over the weekend and it was pretty decent. Um, most so for Elon, less so for the actual um, cast of Saturday Night Live and the comedians that are on there all the time, less so for them, except with the exception of maybe Michael Che, that new stuff he does is really funny. It was great to actually see when he took the money out of his pocket and just making that, um, so, you know, doing that kind of back and forth with Elon about Dogecoin and the dollar and stuff. Um, he's wearing actually jeans you know when he's doing that whole new segment he wears jeans and just puts a blazer and a shirt on oh, that was quite funny to see that because you can see a bit of his you know bottoms as he was ruffling through his pockets but yeah Elon Musk hosted Saturday Night Live and it was pretty nice I'm going to be honest um, uh, it was great he did a little monologue in the beginning and sort of gave a shout out to his mum during I think Mother's Day obviously as it says here in the New York Times their back and forth was a bit cringe a little bit awkward but again she's a mum you know what i mean it's pretty hard and difficult to do that thing in front of a live audience um on time and make it somehow comedic they felt fairly robotic but hey it makes sense they're just they're just two ordinary people in front of a camera on the biggest stage in the world and it's just going to be always a bit awkward and then um elon announced that he had asperger's 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 right uh, however you pronounce that um, a neurodegenerative disease which he hadn't really disclosed beforehand. I'm not really sure if he had said anything. Obviously, if you're a fan of Elon and you're a fan of the stuff that he does and the companies that he's founded, you would have, you know, been under some, you know, suspicion that he had something going on. But again, it's none of our business, so you keep that stuff sort of private. And he doesn't need to share anything with us. And it also <coughs> maybe lends credence as to why he's so um, enthusiastic about Neuralink. Um, you know what he's doing with the chips that are going to be implanting people's brains and how that could, you know, basically see a future where people's sights are restored and their ability to walk and all this sort of like really cool stuff so maybe that was kind of spurned by his early diagnosis of having asperger's but that was pretty cool that he revealed that but it's also pretty awesome that somebody like him never actually used that as something to boost himself because for as fame hungry and attention hungry as elon is he never once used it as something that he could maybe propel himself forward with I and mean, even after he announced it on saturday night live he didn't follow it up with an explanation post he didn't do some sit down on the camera and they talk about it, nothing he's just kind of gone on and life is normal which has been pretty refreshing to see somebody for once not victimize themselves even though they probably have all the reason to do and everyone will have the great sympathy for them if they did it was refreshing that he didn't do so so this is kind of of Elon, uh, sorry, Elon Musk, um, New York Times, Elon Musk hosts a Mother's Day episode of Saturday Night Live. The multi, um, sorry, the much discussed Tesla and SpaceX executive took a self deprecating approach, telling viewers, I'm pretty good at running human in, in uh, running human in emulation mode continues in the end an episode of Saturday Night Live hosted by Elon Musk turned out to be exactly that no more and no less Musk the billionaire chief executive of Tesla and the founder of SpaceX appeared in several SNL sketches this weekend playing characters that included a doctor at hospital that case a generation Z patients which may be one of my favorite sketches very cringe it'll probably make you barf into you barf in your own mouth but in terms of being funny it was really well especially the flipping supreme urn like uh, epic epic stuff definitely check it out the producer of an icelandic talk show tv show that was really good too and the video game villain warrior um he used his opening monologue to share some personal details about himself introducing viewers to his mother and discussing his diagnosis for asperger's syndrome and to graciously plug a cryptocurrency um sure a couple of sketches felt a little eager to polish uh, marx's public image like a film segment that cast him in a mission commander to an effort to save the martian colony running dangerously low on oxygen Meanwhile, it's up to Pete Davidson playing his hapless doofus character Chad to save the day on a red card planet. Um, even so, Musk's presence didn't stop SNL from taking a few satirical pot shots at him. Colin Just, a weekend update anchor, noted during the portion of the show that debris from the Chinese rocket had crashed into the Indian Ocean only a short while late earlier. He said, and for once, we, and we know it's not Elon's fault. A lot of people have been wondering why is he hosting the show and now we know it's because he needed an alibi. That was pretty funny. Musk took opportunities he did, um, he could to humanize himself to this no audience as he said in the monologue 21 offended i just want to say i reinvented these electric cars i'm sending people to mars on a rocket ship did you think i was going to be chill normal dude so that was pretty funny too um overall it was good um the lead up to it was quite cringy snl cast members saying they weren't going to appear on camera with him for reasons i don't know um one of them being that bow and yang guy he was one of the main people that was involved in the sketches so i guess he was able to kind of put his um personal grievances about elon to one side and could communicate with him um you know or do this or do the sketches with him so i'd be interested to hear 
I wonder if you ever do so, if you ever spill the beans as to what happened behind the scenes, because I'm sure there was some fairly diva-ish um, behaviour going on with some of the SNL cast members when he arrived. So that was pretty decent to watch uh, overall. But I think as SNL, um, as an actual thing, I can't understand why all these LA podcasts I listen to are so obsessed with SNL when it's that crap. It is horrendous. Like one of the worst TV shows to watch in terms of sketch comedy. Surely this can't be the pinnacle of American sketch comedy. It can't. I refuse to believe it. There's people on YouTube. Hell, even what's his name? Um, yeah, what is uh, what's his name? Oh, what's his name? Jesus Christ, Ellis. What's he got fired from flipping SNL? Who does um the uh, Matt? Matt, yeah, Matt, is it Matt and Shane's secret podcast? Well, Matt and Sh what's his name? Secret podcast. What's the guy's name? Uh, duh, 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 duh. Man, shit, what's Shane Gillis, that's it. Shane Gillis, remember he got fired from it, right? He does, he's got this YouTube channel where he does some sketches with his friends and they're great. Easily better than anything I've ever watched from SNL. Obviously, Tim Dillon does some great sketches too that are really funny. Um, uh, Andrew Schultz does a sketchy type improv some stuff for a little bit he's got that music video at the moment all that stuff is way funnier than this stuff like SNL is trash like I found some of the sketches so cringy especially the comedians are on it they're not funny at all it's all these weird social justice messages framed in comedy cultural things like, it's really bad it's honestly the worst thing I've seen in a very very long time and Elon Musk was basically a bit of fresh air in it he, like, he kind of took it really well he went in it loosey-goosey he was falling around a lot you could see he's having a really good time with it he was obviously great in his um custom Givenchy suit that Matthew Williams let us all know that he made which was great <laughs> um but yeah the show overall was pretty crap but maybe the main reason why he went on there was to basically promote this what is it no it's not that uh, to promote the Cybertruck <laughs> So he arrived in New York, driving the Cybertruck all around New York. Um, great bit of marketing um, there, to be honest, right? Genius level of marketing, actually. Driving it all around the streets of New York. Him and flipping Grimes and Toe. It looked flipping incredible. Legitimately, I cannot wait to see what people do when they get the Cybertruck themselves and how they basically customize them and make them look a bit different, you know, than everyone else, whatever. If people put rims on it, if they wrap it in different ways, because the car itself looks, look at that. Imagine you're crossing the sidewalk um somewhere in the states and you see somebody driving past in that it looks like nothing else on the road that, that might effectively change how cars look could you know forever and ever because one thing i would say is a bit of a car fan from you know i guess car design went kind of fell off a cliff maybe late 90s the designs of cars just started to get a little bit boring and a little bit you know samey and safe whereas this is suddenly looks like nothing you've ever seen on a road the cyber truck it looks flipping incredible look at that look at the headlights like what an amazing an amazing specimen of a vehicle so i'm really anxious to see what people do when they get theirs um so so many flicks of it so this might have explained the main reason why elon decided to do snl you know like this this um marketing campaign leading up to it where people are deciding that they're not they're not gonna rush the show or they're not gonna take part in it because there's Elon he's a billionaire and then all this stuff with him driving around New York in this cyber truck is definitely going to make people wanna order um more of these cars when they finally become available especially when he, they're more of them on the street because there's a lot of people have pre-ordered now obviously because of the crazy cheap pre-order price of a hundred bucks whatever it was but i'm sure there's going to be even more people that are going to end up buying them once they have their friend or somebody in the area purchased one that's how it always works in it with most cars people love to kind of just copy what everyone else is buying when it looks a bit cool and seen it in kind of real life so for sure that will end up happening and then we've got one last image here of the Cybertruck in the Tesla store. It looks like in Manhattan, right? So they parked up there. I'm sure you could have even pre-ordered it there right there on st inside in store as well. So a great piece of marketing, merchandising, sales, influencer marketing, whatever you call it. Um, really worked really well. Look at that. It even got a license plate attached onto it. Like bloody awesome. Excellent, excellent, excellent. It looks fucking fantastic, doesn't it? It really does look fantastic. I'm not gonna lie you can't say it doesn't look fantastic it looks fucking gorgeous so yeah big up elon musk big up elon musk